sometimes when you start off old seeds to see if they are viable or not. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. This year I decided to try some uh, planting quite a few seeds per cell to see if some of the older seeds are viable. And if they are, I would separate them and plant them on uh, once they begin to get their true leaves. So I planted Pop Joy and Broccoli Rab that were from a seed packet round about 2016-17 and the germination rate was amazing on these two types of seeds and the mass planting seemed to have worked quite well underneath my grow lights. They are fairly close to the grow lights so they didn't get too awfully leggy except for perhaps the broccoli rab started to really take off so it's a fast grower. I don't know why I thought they would grow slowly but they didn't. They grew really fast and, and the ones that I was under the misconception of the lettuce would grow quickly of course it's an old seed packet as well just barely germinated now. Now the broccoli rab and the Chinese cabbage were both planted the same time as the celery and the butter crunch lettuce on March 17th on St. Patrick's Day. I thought that would be appropriate for all these little green-headed babies to pop up out looking like little aliens. So, uh, celery, just now it is germinating, but not like I could probably count just on a couple of fingers so far. I don't know, time will tell. The chives were old. I planted, uh, they were saved seeds, I believe. I don't know when I saved them because silly me forgot to mark the date when I saved them from my own garden. But the broccoli wrap, that is just amazing. So I thought it was time to pot up some pak choy and some broccoli wrap. Well, actually, the broccoli rab got potted out because they were the longest stemmed plants in that green um, planter, tray planter that I started them off on. And the, uh, so once I get the broccoli rab out, I thought I can, you know, smooth over that once they're all gone on the green tray and I can uh, spread out my pak choy in there and pick out the best ones. So I'm trying to pick out the ones that have the true leaves uh, on the broccoli rab. Some of them I sacrifice because, I mean, how many plants on mass that you've planted and sprouted <laughs> can you grow? Because you have to be able to grow them somewhere. And I don't have that much real estate to grow that many. And, um, yeah, I was going to... Um, save it and have it like on a salad but I don't have any lettuce for a salad and I didn't have enough sacrificial seedlings to just eat I guess I could have put them on the pizza but what I decided to do was just take once I was all done and I had all of these poor little babies that I've sacrificed on my uh, planter tray a seedling tray and so I just I had a little bit of soil left in one of the containers I just threw them in there and covered them over lightly and a little bit of spritz of water and see what they do see if they sprout the ones I had you know separated and pulled out and yanked out and whatnot <laughs> some have roots some don't so we're going to see if they uh, grow in that kind of condition of just chucking them all in there dropping a little bit of soil on top, potting soil, and uh, see what happens. Charles Downing, I enjoy watching his videos because he plants on mass like this all the time. And he separates them and he pokes a hole with a pencil when he pots up and just drops them in there. And pretty much, you know, he, he doesn't really backfill or very much anything. He just taps the thing and he's done. So I was trying to do that. I did have to backfill a little bit with because I didn't have enough soil in there. And uh, and some of them I, I didn't get down because the little uh, seedlings were so tall. 
I needed to, you see how tall that is going in there? It was almost the whole height of the uh, planter, little, uh, little uh, cell planter there potting up. So anyway, I got it, I got them potted up and uh, I didn't count how many, so I can't tell you that, but there were quite a few that I potted up and I'm sure some will, uh, some will go on to, to flourishing and others may be stunted, who knows. Uh, but I wasn't as, trying not to touch the roots, but I wasn't as gentle as I am in the past. And I didn't pack it down in there hard, and uh, which I typically do in the past, and that never seemed to work too well. And I had so many, and I didn't want my back to hurt, so <laughs> I just sort of did what Charles Downing did. I tried to, you know, do what he did. I just recently watched uh, his uh, No Dig uh, of Planting Potatoes, so... I have some potato sets coming in the mail from my seed company, but not until it's time for me. They hold back until it's time to plant out, which is good. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be planting no-dig potatoes when I get those in. And uh, a lot of the snow is melted off the, the front yard. There's a little strip of snow <laughs> remaining. It's probably going to rain today, so that'll probably be gone by the end of the day. And in the backyard, it's almost all gone. The ground is still frozen, I would assume. I haven't been out there yet, because why bother until you can actually do something? I have enough stuff to occupy my time in the house. So, the whole purpose of this video was to... I was having issues with my editor crashing, and I talked to my son about it, and he said... That's one of the main problems with editing softwares and computers that the editing software crashes because unless you have a uber expensive computer, it can't handle the editing software. So, well, I don't have an, a highly uber expensive computer. It's a hand-me-down and uh, it's old. So it's experiencing difficulty, but it worked fine before. But before I only had five minute videos and I'm trying to get a little bit longer videos just to sort of get um I don't know to offer more I just this year I, I'm all excited about making videos and I had taken uh, a year off more or less and just had lost all interest and in the excitement's back and I'm just all gung-ho about doing different things and I'm gonna do it my way you know how the, the word the two words YouTube are and what it originally used to be, it used to be you and I making videos of whatever we wanted and putting them up. There were no advertisements. There were no monetization. There were no stipulations. It was just make a video and upload it to YouTube and, you know, and hopefully you hope for people to watch and, and you took enjoyment in making the videos. And I decided this year with the gardening excitement just just exploding inside me that I'm so excited this year. Perhaps because of the last two years of, you know, uncertainty and this year I thought, you know, I'm gonna just regain my happy place. I'm gonna put back the joy I had in gardening. I'm not gonna worry about having to share with the critters because I know I will. Uh, I planted on mass this year. I've never done that. Usually two seeds per cell is all I'd ever do. Then they'd get leggy and fall over and then die a slow death usually with their little heads hanging over the side of the pot. So I thought if I pack, if I planted on mass, they would hold each other up and support each other. Sort of like YouTube used to do. <laughs> you see the correlation I just made there. So my on mass bok choy and pok uh, broccoli rab and pok choy supported one another in that small you know seedling tray and they held each other up until they get to a certain point where you know you need to give them attention and pot them up to a single pot so they can you know really flourish it's sort of like youtube used to be and I decided I'm not going to, you know, overly edit videos. I'm not going to 
sometimes there's going to be banging in the kitchen going on. I'm not going to edit out the noise. I'm going to make it the way YouTube was originally supposed to be. We had cheap cameras that the resolution was terrible. I had my son tell me how to lower the resolution on the cell phone. This is what I filmed this particular video on because I wanted the resolution to look like it used to look. Back in 2015 when I started with a rickety old digital camera and the, well actually this resolution is still better than that one was back then but you, you get the idea I want to go back because after yesterday I was trying to uh, edit a 45 minute video and the heart and home series I want to start and develop I'm not certain how often I'm going to put it out because those will particularly my maybe be long videos that not everybody's cup of tea but I enjoy long videos. I will set myself up with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or I'll lay in bed and I'll get all cozy underneath the covers usually during the winter and I will watch long videos and completely enjoy them and go oh did that 45 minutes end already? I want more. I found myself wanting more. I, I don't go for these you know little quickie things. I mean, I'll watch them, yeah, but I enjoyed it. Like, just sink your teeth into, like, a T-bone instead of just a flat nothing hamburger type thing, you know, that you finish in a couple of minutes, a few bites, and it's gone. A nice, juicy T-bone steak. You could, you know, you cut that up, and it takes you a while to eat it. Or, you know, a big bowl of spaghetti or whatever. You know, you, you get my drift here. So sometimes... Less is more, and sometimes a longer video is very enjoyable. And I don't have TV anymore. I got rid of my satellite TV from Bell. Uh, it just became too expensive. So I, I watch a lot of videos. I learn a lot of things. I see a lot of different ways about doing things. And then I like to run tests of my own to see how well those things work for me. Uh, we don't all have the same climate. We don't all have the same weather or uh, growing zones. We all have different growing zones. And uh, I have a very limited space and even more limited light from all the trees that surround my property, which happened to be the reason I bought the property 22 years ago is for the trees. I have a great love of trees. I always have ever since I was a young child. My goodness, three or four years old, I can remember riding in the car with my grandparents looking out the window when we were going somewhere in Florida. And, you know, Florida, if, if you're unaware, very tall pine trees in Florida, uh, probably with those bad hurricanes, not so many anymore. But when I was young, they were amazing because they would tower so, almost look like they were reaching for the clouds in the sky. And when the breeze would go, they would sway back and forth. And if the breeze got a little bit stronger than normal, they would bend, but they wouldn't break. And I remember as a child going, look at that tall tree. Hopefully someday I'll be tall. Well, that didn't happen. And, uh, <laughs> but I learned from those trees at a young age, you can bend and not break. And I've always kept that in the back of my mind, no matter what happens to me, on any occasion, and let me tell you, a lot has happened in these six decades, but I can sway and I can bend, but I will not break. Some days it feels like I come pretty close to breaking, but I don't. I remember those trees, how strong they were, how flexible they were, how forgiving they were. and the grouping in the forest of pine trees they all supported one another with grace and safety and it's just if you stop and think about these things for just a few moments it's amazing it really is and simple things such as that can help you get through challenging times in your life and uh, so anyway, this is just sort of an explanation about why I have 
videos that are short, some are, some are long, some are exceptionally long, like my longest one I've ever made just recently, Heart and Home series, it's 45 minutes. Now, I don't know if they're all going to be that. I'm not going to put a time limit on it. It's just what I cook in the kitchen in one day type thing, or how I garden possibly in one day. It'll be, you know, a combination of those all stitched together if this editor will work. So I am, like I said, testing out this low res because um, I'm doing a voiceover and I do enjoy doing that because between my squeaky floor, because you know, you know why your floors, your wooden floors, or your floors squeak underneath your linoleum is because the nails pop up from the um, plywood that's underneath your linoleum and it squeaks. When we renovated upstairs, we pulled all the carpet out because, oh my God, it must have come from the 70s. So yank that all out of there from upstairs. We put not expensive hardwood flooring, you know, a set, you know, you just sort of pop them together, hardwood flooring uh, that you don't dare get overly wet because <laughs> it'll probably peel, but it looks pretty. And it, it was cost efficient for me, and I was able to afford that. So, but we made sure that all of the nails were, you know, completely hammered back into the plywood underneath, underlay, I suppose you call it. I'm not sure what you call it. I'm not really big into construction, but I know there's plywood under there, and there's nails, and they were popping up, and that's where the squeaky was if you walk over it. So, we popped them down and had to. Uh, literally because the floor was so uneven up there had to literally get that leveling cement that you can buy from a hardware store and you pour it out and it finds level to the rest of the floor to get the whole floor level so because the 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 hardwood uh, flooring panels wouldn't they wouldn't go together properly and they would just pop up if you had an unlevel floor so that's the problem with those type uh, of application of flooring is you need level or it's just not going to work you're going to have a nightmare so anyway that that product i don't know what it was called i just know it's self leveling concrete of some sort and uh it's not like your regular concrete you use outside it's for you know the plywood that's on level so anyhow we got that done and um with some help of a friend of mine and uh that was a long process. It took all summer, but oh my goodness, it was so worth it. It was so worth it. And and I had help. I had someone to help me. And they were knowledgeable, thank goodness, because I wasn't. <laughs> I just sort of knew what I wanted to do. And he would show me how to do it or tell me how to do it or help me to do it. And he did the leveling and was explaining it to me. And Not that I really remember all of it because it was sort of whoosh over my head a little bit, but... <laughs> but we got her done. I got my, my bathroom renovated, the old heavy, st um, uh, I don't know, it was a steel tub that they used to, they used to put in homes. We got that out of there and put in a nice um, seamless bathtub with shower surround and whatnot. Very nice, very nice. Uh, renovation up there. We didn't do anything to downstairs other than me painting my cupboards and painting the walls when I first moved in and oh, replacing the um, the kitchen uh, the kitchen what do you call it? Countertop? Now I wish I had or back then I wish I had used a different uh, a different style or color or, or uh, because I, I picked pretty plain. Well, I was picking the cheapest one because money was, you know, money was tight. And uh, after buying a house, you don't have much left over for renovations. And you do, you know, you do, you only do what you have to do. And I had to replace the countertop because underneath it was rotten because they had no shutoff valves in this house, which is unbelievable that there were no shutoff valves. So when they had a leak at the sink, uh, it just rotted out the uh, countertop underneath and whatnot because that's just press board. So I had to have a plumber come in and, and install shutoff valves on every faucet, every toilet. And I didn't even have a shutoff valve to the main water coming into my house from the street. So I had to have the city turn it off, pay the, mo the money that they charged to turn it off at the, at, out on the street. 
and they give the um, I think they gave the plumber 30 minutes so we we coordinated the time and everything and he put the shutoff valve to the main house of uh, my water because we ever had oh it's just ridiculous I, I don't understand why there was no shutoff valves I just eh. And it wouldn't be something, I mean, you would think there would be shutoff valves to the, the main water leading into your house from the city. So never assume, you know, and I assumed, which was wrong. And I had the house inspected, and they didn't find that, or they didn't write it down. And I paid $320 to have an inspection before buying the house, and they didn't say anything. So I could have had the seller put a, put a shutoff valve at their expense into the basement where it was located but anyway that's beside the point it has nothing to do with these little seedlings my little green-headed babies here are getting potted up and the, the sacrificial lambs are going into just a uh a pot with soil and i'm just going to see what happens see if any of those survive plants want to live and i had a tendency to be so gentle that i wound up killing most of them <laughs> You know, wound up killing most of them. And these are just baby seedlings, and you know you gotta handle them nicely and gently. But you know, they're not fragile. They they want to live, and if you know, you don't bend them and swing them over your head and go yeehaw, then <laughs> they'd pretty much be okay. So I hope anyway. So. And once I, um, once I divided them up and potted them up, uh, I did not put them underneath the grow light. They need a few days just to adjust because I don't want to put them underneath that grow light because one of them is, they're, they're bright and one of them is quite warm and no, they need to, to adjust first. And then, and then uh, after a couple of days, I will put them back under the grow light and uh, they'll just have the light, you know, the light of the house not to grow lights so I think they'll be okay uh, I'm a bit uh, nasally today because well it's spring and my sinuses yeah now for the rest of the season uh, up until winter I'm probably going to sound like I have a cold but I don't I have sinus I've always had sinus as soon as which is and I even have it in the winter time which is odd but I have evergreen trees out back so I don't know. You wouldn't think there would be any pollen coming off of them, but there's something going on that alters my sinus or barometric pressure. I've been reading up on that a little bit this past winter. Well, a couple of winters, just sort of keeping a, a little track on, you know, how my head or my sinuses are, where my ears plugged, and how high the barometric pressure is. And because every time there's a hurricane in Florida, down south from me and I'm in Ontario Canada it the jet stream travels right up to me right directly up to me it takes about a week but it gets here and my sinuses no because my ears start to plug and yeah there's a pressure in my head from it until it goes back down to where whatever's normal for my head I've never documented that so I have no idea but I do notice that there is a change in how I feel and now I know why. So I, you know, I don't take sinus meds or anything like that for it because I know it'll adjust itself very shortly. So you know, I'm I'm one for not to take a lot of pills. Less is more as far as that's concerned on me. And uh, I don't even uh, take too many pain pills. I try not to anyway because uh, for one, when I am in great pain, which does happen with the uh, with arthritis and previous broken bones, you know, with the with the rain and spring and whatnot, and they, they tend to rear up their ugly head at you and hurt. And it's a gnawing hurt. It just doesn't go away no matter what you do, or where you put. Like say my I broke both legs not at the same time, thank heavens, but different times apart. One when I was ten, another in my thirties. And, uh, yeah, so, the, you know, residual pain and arthritis, I've read, sets in to broken bones or injuries. If you have an injury or a sprain, or not a sprain, but a sprain or something, or a torn ligament or tendon or whatever, when you age, you tend to have issues. Well, okay. 
now that I know, I'll deal with it. I don't go, why is this hurting? I go, oh, I know why this is hurting. So I try and stay away from the pain meds until it's absolutely necessary. Because it's not good for your liver if you do it too often. And I would be doing it too often because I've learned how to live with pain. And that's something that uh, years ago, the doctors, I can remember going to the dentist and he said, you don't have to be in pain. We can do this or that or whatever during a procedure at the dentist and I said well you know I always make a joke about that I always I said well I know I'm alive if I can feel pain it's when I can't feel the pain then you know I tend to wonder <laughs> you know because I never want to overdo it and uh, so <laughs> he'd get a giggle out of that a silly woman sitting in the dentist chair but I would take the um, the shots in the mouth when they had to do the um, root canals. Yeah, I'm not a glutton for punishment, let me tell you, by no means. And I don't like the dentist. I never have. The sound of the drill. It isn't the pain. It's the sound of the drill. Because when I was young, my grandpa took me to a um, little carnival, you know, where you buy tickets at the little, just inside the gate. There's a ticket master. And they give you this long string of these little pull-apart tickets. So I wanted to go on the bumper cars. And I was not tall enough to go on the bumper cars. But the guy, the carney, running the bumper cars just let me through anyway. And there was this, this boy who was quite older than me. A couple of years, maybe three or four. He thought it would be funny to keep bumping me. Well, that's the whole purpose of the bumper cars, right? But he was starting way back and then full tilt speed coming at me, right? And I didn't know he was going to do it. And he came up behind me and hit me so hard that it threw me forward because there were no seat belts in those bumper cars back then. We're talking about the 60s, folks. So I, my head went forward, hit the hard steering wheel of the bumper car, there was no padding either. There probably is now. But there was no padding. It was hard, hard plastic. And it cracked my tooth in the front. Well, I'm blood everywhere, and I'm screaming at the carnival man, Carney, to, to stop the ride. But he wouldn't because he couldn't hear me over the darn music playing because they always play loud music. And the bumper cars are banging into each other, and kids are screaming and laughing and having a good time. And I tried to find my grandpa, and so I took my bumper car over to where my grandpa was off, you know, to the side watching. And I was pointing at my face because there was blood running all down. I looked like a train wreck. And uh, so he, six foot two, big old man. I used to be a police officer in Los Angeles, California. But, uh, yeah, he sternly went to the carnet and said, you stop this ride, my granddaughter's hurt. But Carney didn't even know. He was too busy smoking a cigarette and drinking something out of a plastic cup. That could have been pop. <laughs> Let's just say. I won't assume what it was in that cup. But anyway, so he stopped the ride. And I went into the dentist. And this was a holiday, actually. So it was an emergency call. And the dentist came in. Well, the dentist, I think, had been drinking, maybe because he forgot to give me the uh, the shot to numb your gum before he sawed and shaped my broken tooth. Oh gosh, so I was screaming and the dentist reared his hand back to slap me and Grandpa barreled through the door and saw what was going to happen and he threatened him, <laughs> probably by the edge of his life. And he stood in there and he grandpa did and he stayed with me because you know this this terrible experience with this inebriated dentist probably but it's small town so you know you don't have a choice as to you know who's on call you just take the one person that's there and he happened to be having a fun time probably at a barbecue which you can't blame him for that but he shouldn't have come in but then I don't know what we would have done maybe driven to another town I don't know, but needless to say, <laughs> yeah, I don't like dentists. I never did from then on. And I wasn't even, I don't know, maybe I was seven, possibly eight. I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I don't like 
So I would uh, take my Walkman in when I had to go to the dentist. You know, we're going forward a few decades, and I would play it loudly in my ear. And uh, when I knew they were going to do drills, and they always do drills, and I threatened the dentist with an inch of his life, saying, "Don't rev that drill." I know men love to rev power tools. You take a man in a saw or a chainsaw, and they're going to rev it. You take a man on a on a snowmobile, they're going to rev that engine. Yeah, they're going to rev it. Uh, it. It's a guy thing, I think. I don't know. But the dentists like to rev that drill, that little metal drill. And I said, do not do it when I'm here. You know, because my fingernails would probably poke it through the leather of his chair. <laughs> so the Walkman helped, because I'd crank that up, and I w couldn't hear a thing. And that was fine, and I got through it. <laughs> Just a little story into who the heck this crazy old lady is <laughs> and reasons why we do things and reasons why maybe we should do things and long story short or maybe not short at all I'm trying to go back to what YouTube used to be for me I'm not telling anybody else to do it I'm just doing it for me because that's when I was the happiest when I was just making videos I made a crazy little video about a bell pepper in like an indoor emergency room setting because it wasn't doing well so I set it up with IVs and really just a hose looking you know it wasn't an actual IV but <laughs> and I put goofy music on it back in the day where they didn't care what we used and and it's sort of psychedelic I don't know what kind of editing thing I had but it was it was it was it looked like a video from the 70s. It wasn't, but it sort of looked like it. It wasn't very good. <laughs> but let me tell you, it was a hoot and a holler to make. It was so much fun. And I miss that because I got so stressed out because I have a tiny little, as I call it, Barbie kitchen. I'm trying to do cooking videos. I didn't have the proper lighting. One year, my, my, my daughter, she spent the money and bought me one of those nice lights that you can use to make videos. It's on a tripod stand, and you can alter, you know, the height. My son bought me uh, this, uh, uh, or no, my son bought the light. My daughter bought me this uh, microphone. Uh, it's called Blue, although the microphone's white, and it sort of stands, looks tripod -y. Also in a big uh, round globe type thing that you could talk into. It works really well. I really enjoy doing uh, voiceovers because the sound is so much better this way than me trying to talk into the cell phone because the cell phone picks up so well that it, it, it too well. It picks up everything. Everything. They get the people next door walking on their floor because there's some teenagers next door and they don't walk gently on the floor. Well, you know, why would they? <laughs> and we're connected by a brick wall. I live in a condominium, so there's three uh, dwellings that are connected. I'm in the middle, so, and we're divided by um, um, brick wall, concrete, not concrete, but masonry bricks, I guess, firewall between the walls, the outer walls that, are, that connect us. I don't know if I explained that well enough, but that's that's about all I know. And uh, yeah, so this works really well, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I enjoy trying to make it sound good to the best of my ability. Now, my abilities aren't all that grand, but I do the best I can, and if I'm happy with it, or I say something funny and it makes myself laugh. I, I hope I give you guys over there listening, you know, a nice volume type recording and maybe a little giggle here and there because, let's face it, folks, we all need a little giggle here and there. And no matter how bad certain things got, I always try to keep a smile on my face or, or giggle over something that was just, you know, immaterial, but I'd giggle. And uh, I actually had a person one time say, why do you laugh so much? Why are you smiling so much? And I was perplexed, and I didn't answer right away. I just sort of, uh, the, the wrinkles came between my eyes, you know, when you're, when you're questioning something, and it, it just seems so odd, 
question for them to ask. Why do I laugh so much? Or why am I smiling? Like, can you imagine that someone would ask that question? And I just looked at them after like 30 seconds and I went, well, the question, the answer is a question. And the question is for you, why aren't you? Why aren't you smiling at a butterfly flying by or a robin or a hummingbird or your flowers out in your garden or somebody says something silly in lieu of trying to get, you know, a little bit of laughter in the room and they're just stone-faced because, you know, it's not some comedian that, you know, is outrageous. It's just a slight little ha-ha, but they just nothing, you know, it's like crickets. <laughs> You see, I can make myself laugh all the time. Um, yeah, that is another aspect of making these videos that I do enjoy. I do enjoy uh, actually making myself laugh because sometimes it's hard to find the laughter. It's hard to find something to giggle at, you know. And a lot of times you have to stand still. Like, I'll stand or sit in front of my patio door out back, and I'll watch the chipmunks or the squirrels and their antics. They are better than any TV channel around. They are a hoot, and especially in the spring, leading up to spring. I mean, I know we're in springtime, but we're still coming out of winter here in, in Canada, so in Ontario. So they're, they're ferocious little things, you know, because they're just... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where? I know she plants plants. Where is it? Where are they? They're not here. And they're looking for them. So they remember. I don't know how they remember. Because I assumed that from year to year. Like, I don't know how long chipmunks live. I didn't research that. I do know they have two litters in one year. And uh, they love to rip burlap to pieces and take it down for their nests. Because they asked me how I know, because I had a burlap cover one summer when it was um, in the hundreds. Hundred, uh, it was like 105, 112 some days, and my plants they 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 couldn't take that. So because they're not acclimated to that kind of heat up here, when they start to go outside, you know, you acclimate them so they don't, you know, <laughs> just. <laughs> little heads just tilt over and, you know, just sort of go, I can't take this, because I've been indoors and she put a little fan on me, yeah, but I can't take this, 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 what's coming off of this big ball of red out there, like the sun. <laughs> I could just hear the little plants going, what the heck is that? That isn't a plant light, what is that? That is awfully massive and it's very potent. What is it? Get me the heck out of here. So I found by the eve of my house, I would set my plants so they're not in the direct sunlight. They would be underneath the eve, and the way the backyard is situated, there's really no strong sun unless you're in the middle of my patio deck, and it's 12 noon where the sun is straight up. Then you get some powerful sun, so that's what I do with my seedlings. Because <laughs> one year I put them right out in the middle thinking it would go be good. Oh no, they dropped dead. Lickety split, yeah, yeah. They went, oh no, you don't. Nope. And down they went. They didn't pop back up. No. So I thought, okay, live and learn. Learn something new every day. So I take the time. I hate doing it, taking those plants in and out and in and out. I have my grow lights at the other end of my dining room and my patio door is at the opposite end, so I gotta drag them out. Not that the house is that big, but take them all the way out through the door, set them up, hope the chip try and cover them up with something because the chipmunks and the squirrels are going to go and steal all my little seedlings that I just put out because they're, they're running back and forth on my deck every day. Right there by the opening of my patio door, you'll see them. They'll even stop in front of my patio door and look in, for God's sakes. There they are sitting there just looking in the door. Yeah. They are vicious little critters, and they want my seedlings, so. 
have to try and do my best to protect them. Uh, but, you know, if it wasn't for all that, I might not garden at all because it would be boring. This is never boring because you never know what you're going to get. How you handle your seedlings. Will they make it on the transition outside? Will you be able to keep the critters off of them until they get planted out into your garden bed that you've had to protect from the critters? Now, you know, a chipmunk, they can squeeze like a mouse. So, yeah. It's like good luck with that, and I don't have the proper wiring and whatnot to keep them out. And ooh, so, a greenhouse cover does a pretty doggone good job of, uh, as long as it doesn't get too hot, keeping them out. They can't get in there, so I'm gonna build something. I don't know, and hope for the best. And I'm gonna plant out in the yard this year and make another permaculture bed and. I don't know if I'm leaving the original there or just moving it over or I don't know. I, I, I don't like to move the soil uh, once it's there because it's, the, what is it, the biology of the soil is really, really healthy in the permaculture bed even though it's seen its better days and it's sinking, yeah, uh, because it's, let's see supposed to last 20 years but I used birch and I used oh it was a tree that had to be cut down it was a birch tree and th that tree in my backyard was a reason another reason I bought the house because I fell in love with that birch tree and uh and the other evergreen trees that I have in my backyard and there's an ugly pine back there and that's what it's called an ugly pine I don't know why that's what my husband used to tell me anyway I called ugly pine it's probably got a proper name for it but I call it the ugly pine because it's not it's not a pretty Florida pine I mean, by any means <clears throat> and it doesn't have needles but it does have little pine cones which is interesting it doesn't have pine needles like they do in Florida those long skinny ones that look like chopsticks it doesn't have that so um, anyhow um, I lost my train of thought oh the permaculture bed so the woodpeckers were making a condominium of homes over I don't know maybe a four-year span and then it, it became dangerous to keep that tree so I had it cut down I hired somebody and told them to cut it down and cut me you know length of logs and uh, just let them drop where they are and I'll deal with it and so I made a permaculture bed out of that and I knew at the time that if you don't use rotting wood already and you use you know uh, it'll last roughly about 17 to 20 years you, you keep adding a bit to it, but it doesn't greatly shrink like mine is because my uh, I did two permaculture beds with that wood, and then last year I dug up one because uh, I wanted to uh, do something different over there, and there was no more wood. All the birch had gone back into the soil. You couldn't even find a piece of wood of the logs that were underneath there. And it was dug down about two feet, and the logs were set in there, and then the branches, and then the limbs, and you know how to make a horticulture, horti, 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 horti. I call it permaculture bed because I get horti, horti something. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Anyhow, it was completely gone, so I figured, oh, so my main one's gone too. No wonder it's sinking the way it is, because I thought it was the chipmunks burrowing up through there because they, they found it and they, they made tunnels under the ground coming up through the middle of my permaculture bed. Yeah, and having a field day. Hopefully they were eating some of the slugs too though, so because I did have a slug problem back in there because my, my, my ground sort of slopes down. So any rainwater, you know, winds up there, which I never had to water my permaculture bed except for one summer out of out of all the years I had it, I only had to water it once because it, you don't need to. And I didn't have any weeds, maybe two. And I didn't have to pull weeds. I didn't have to water it. It was perfect. And it grew vegetables beautifully and it did everything wonderfully. And you're probably wondering why are you, why are you thinking of uh, destroying it? Well, because it's almost, it's almost ground level. It's not far from, if I were to push down on it, it probably would be almost ground level. So. Uh, so I thought I would, you know, use my compost and maybe transfer the soil from one into the new 
no dig permaculture bed that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it a little bit because I can't dig. I, I there's too many boulders. It, it about killed me trying to dig all those boulders out to make the permaculture bed. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the stories that I've told you in this and watching this video of me potting up my broccoli wrap. Have a great day.